When searching for text in InDesign, grep is known as greedy, and that just means that it wants to see each paragraph as a whole when searching. It basically sees each paragraph as its own entity. But to get our search more focused, we can use expressions that indicate where the expressions should be found. Luckily, most of the locations that we need are found in that secret menu. So we'll go to the secret menu and scroll down to locations. And the first one we'll take a look at is the beginning of the paragraph. And that gives us our caret character, which is the beginning of the paragraph. When we build this expression, we want to build it in the order it's going to appear. So because we're telling it beginning of the paragraph, that's obviously where we need to start our expression. So at the beginning of the paragraph, what do we want it to find? Well, why don't we tell it to find the first 10 characters? That way we can use some of the expressions that we've already learned. So at the beginning of the paragraph, I would like any character. So I use the period, because remember that's going to give us anything but a hard return. And then I want to tell it exactly 10 characters. So I'm going to put 10 in the curly braces. So now I'll select this text, make sure I'm only searching this story, and tell it find next, find next, and find next. So it jumped down and it showed us the first 10 characters in every paragraph. Another location that we can find is the end of a word. So I put an end of the word, that's the expression for that. I'm going to use my back arrow keys, and I'm going to tell it what I'm looking for. And I noticed I have a lot of ing words in here. So let's find all the words that end in ing. So I have ing and then the end of the word expression. Find next, find next, find next. Got a lot of them. But you'll notice one of the things that we didn't find was this word ingredients. And that's because the ing doesn't come at the end of the word, so it doesn't fit the pattern. Let's find wherever there's a period at the end of a story. Maybe we want to change it to something else. We want to style it in a color or something like that. I'm going to go to my secret menu, come down to locations, and I don't see end of story. For whatever reason, this isn't included in InDesign's secret menu, but there is an expression for it. So what I want to do is come up here, and I want to tell it find a period. We need to do backslash period, because we're finding a literal period, followed by the end of the story, and that's backslash Z. Now I did a capital Z. This is an oddity in that capital Z or lowercase z both work for this expression. So I'm looking for a literal period just before the end of the story. So I'll search on that and say find next, and it finds the period right at the end of the story. Another location might be something along the lines of just find when a word appears by itself as opposed to part of another word. For instance, we have this word grill, but it also appears as part of grilling. If we're looking for it just when it's by itself, we need to isolate that, and we're going to use a word boundary. If you're used to using the Find Change with the Text tab, you might be familiar with this little icon where it says Whole Word. We're going to do the same thing in grep. We just don't have an icon for it. We have to build that into our expression. And this one's located also in the secret menu, and it's listed as Word Boundary, and it's just backslash B. Now I want to put this at the beginning and the end of the word, so I'll just put it there twice, then I'll wedge the word in between. So we'll type in grill. So now I have grill surrounded by these word boundaries. And when I do a search, it only finds the word grill and not grill when it's part of a longer word. One thing you might notice is that this sort of says beginning of the word and the end of the word, that backslash B. And in fact, it does exactly the same thing as choosing beginning of word and end of word. So you can use those interchangeably. Sometimes the pattern only works when it's near or not near something else. I know that's a little confusing. Let's look at this price that's here. We've got this price, and I want the 9.9, or anything that's after the decimal point, to be superscript. So I need to find that. Now to do that, I can use what's called a look around. There are actually four of them. They all live in that secret menu, down under Match. We've got four look arounds at the end. There's look aheads and look behinds, and there's a positive and negative of each. Positive and negative is pretty self-explanatory. We're either looking for something that is there or isn't there. The look behind and look ahead is a little more confusing. So let's go back to this example of this 99. What I want is I want it to find two digits and then look around and see if it comes right after a decimal point. And if it does, then I want to do something to it. How I think about it is if I were walking through the woods on a path and I see something and I want to look behind at something I've already passed. So I kind of think of it as wandering through the sentence. I'm walking along and suddenly I hit two digits. So I've got these two digits here. I'm going to look behind and see if there's a decimal point. If there isn't, I'm going to continue on. So we hit the 99 and I look behind and say, yes, there is one, do something to these digits. So that's a positive look behind. 
Now, I know that's confusing. You might have a better way of remembering that, or you may have to just try each one until it works for you. So let's find this 99 after a decimal point. I'm going to go to the secret menu, come down to match, and remember it's a positive look behind. That's the phrase for a positive look behind. But I need to tell it what it's looking behind for. So I'm going to use my back arrow keys and get sort of inside that expression. And I want it to look for a decimal point, backslash, period, because I'm looking for a literal period character. Then I'm going to come outside that expression and put what it is that's supposed to come after that decimal point. In this case, I'm looking for two digits. I'm going to do backslash D twice. I could also do backslash D and two in curly brackets. So we'll choose this story and say find next. And now it found those two digits. And then we can do something like make that superscript. Now let's do a look ahead. I want to look ahead to see if any words are followed by a question mark. So again, I need to put this in the order that it appears in. I want it to find a word, so I'm going to do backslash W, which is any word character. So that's any upper or lower case, any digit, or the underscore. Any word character, I'm going to do one or more times because I don't know how many characters in each of these words. And now I want it to look ahead to see if there's a question mark. So I'll go to the secret menu, down to match. I'm doing a positive look ahead. And then I need to tell it what it's looking for. Back inside the expression, I'm going to do backslash question mark because I'm looking for a literal question mark as opposed to this, which is a special expression. I'll select this story and tell it find next. And it finds each word that appears before a question mark. We're going to do one more look around and we're going to do a negative look behind. So basically, I want to tell it find a word when it doesn't come right after something else. So in this case, I have the word info down here. Maybe I want to find wherever info appears. But I also have it here as part of what looks to be like a URL. I've got elementum.info. And I don't want it to find it when it's part of that. So I could tell it that it fits the pattern if it doesn't immediately follow a period. So I'm doing a look behind. I'll start with that, match. And it's a negative look behind in this case. There's my expression for that. Go inside the expression. I'm looking for a period, a literal period, backslash period. And then I'll just type the word info. And we'll search on this story and we'll say find next. And it only found it down here, not when it followed that period. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And for thousands more how-to articles and tutorials, visit our website, creativepro.com, and become a member today. Thanks for learning with us.